Hey everybody, it's Mark back with another course review. This time I'm looking at Peabody Disc Golf Course, formerly known as Scouting Woods, uh, located in Peabody. This is in fact my uh, local course, if by local you mean the course that is closest to me that is playable. Uh, I wouldn't say it's my favorite course that I regularly play, but it is the closest course to me, so I have played it probably the most. And uh, for that I think I have a little bit of nostalgia for it. It is a small course, only nine holes, packed into a relatively small piece of property, uh, although they do a fairly good job at making sure there's not a whole lot of overlap or danger uh, in this small piece of land. And I think what they did with this land, uh, as limited as it is, it was, is pretty good. It's got some interesting shots uh, and some fun holes. Let's go uh, just hole by hole, since it's a nine-hole course, uh, and check out each of the holes, and I'll give my thoughts on them. So, starting off with hole number one, it's it's very straightforward. The basket's right in front of you. It's about 200 feet, and you just got to throw a straight shot. Very easy, uh, gentle start to the round. Uh, maybe you get an ace on it. I haven't yet. Sometimes there's an OB line kind of along this path, although I think they've gotten rid of that, uh, which probably, if you have it in there, it makes the hole a bit more interesting because you can't necessarily go long. If you do go very long, maybe 40, 50 feet past, you go off that edge here, and that goes down into kind of a swampy area, but an easy starting hole to begin with. Number two is where Peabody kind of shows what it's about, and that is very tight gaps. Two is the tightest of them all, uh, and I think it's this is one of the better holes on the course uh, because it's just challenging to hit this gap while having enough control to play the course, or excuse me, play the hole well. So you obviously have to hit this gap right here. The basket, of course, is right here. And what you want to do, and I think what most people do, is kind of throw a forehand flex line around here behind that tree going that way. And if you get anywhere on the bottom side of the basket here, the lower side on the hill, uh, that's pretty good. Obviously, you can throw a straight backhand. There are some guardian trees over here on the right that protect if you overturn that backhand. Uh, but the big danger if you go left is that there's OB along this path here. And the forehand shot is the most intuitive, and that's the one I do, but if you hit the left side of these trees, it can easily kick over to the left and threaten OB. So it's just, it, it, it's a test hole, right? It presents you with a simple shot you got to throw uh, that's challenging, uh, and you just have to execute that shot, uh, which is the theme here. There's not a lot of room for a lot of nuance on these, on these holes here at Peabody. Third hole, uh, which I got my finger in the picture, is another straightaway hole. One, three, and five are the birdie holes. Like if you do not birdie those holes, uh, then you're you're feeling bad. You really want to birdie those. The basket's right there. Again, this is around 200 feet, maybe less. Actually, I think it's it, it could be significantly less. You just got to throw it up there. One danger is OB over here along this rock wall because that's where the next T pad is. It's a little tight there. And it is kind of in the hyzer line, uh, so if you're on the next tee pad, you got to kind of watch out. But it's a, it's going to be a softly thrown shot. Uh, again, take it down the middle, get to the basket. Hole three, I think, is really interesting. And that's because there are two, uh, we'll say three different routes here, and they all have their pros and cons. So obviously, you can try the kind of really gentle turnover route straight down the middle. You can try something of a hyzer around this side. Uh, the problem is these trees are really tightly packed and fairly close to the basket. So you need something that goes straight. This one's maybe 250, 260 feet. You need something that goes straight and then takes like a 90 degree turn to the left, then skips over and stops, which is not really feasible. If you're going along this route, you're hoping for like, uh, a 40 to 50 foot putt. Uh, maybe if you get lucky, you get in the circle. Uh, there's also the, of course, the flex line where you can go forehand flex either that way or even around this tree. And the benefit to those lines is that you're then landing skipping up the hill. Now the Anheuser, the gentle turn slash straight shot is probably the best, most direct route, but you know, throwing straight in disc golf is hard. Uh, that's one of the harder things to do. 
and hyzers are obviously going to, unless you sneak around the side here, they're not going to do very well for you. If you're on a land on a hyzer angle and land kind of in an ideal spot, you're going to skip off and this hill just gets steeper as it goes down. So you have these different shots. The forehand flex can work, uh, although that's a difficult shot to pull off as well, which is why I think this, this hole is pretty good. Um, it presents you with a number of options and none of them are particularly comfortable and the more straightforward options with the higher likelihood of success if you execute them are the harder shots for most people to execute. So I think it's a nicely designed hole. Here's number five, which is the most birdiest of the three birdie holes. This one's like 140 feet maybe, really short. Uh, there is OB back here along that area so it's kind of this kind of touch hole but you just got to throw something straight at the basket or what I do is throw my zone and go around here and then try to land like here and then it just kind of dies toward the basket uh, or if you throw something uh, straightforward you want to hit this little ravine here and it'll kind of stop so not much to say about this you don't want to go long but it's pretty easy to manage your distance when it's 140 feet straight downhill then we get to this hole, number six, which I always find to be a very uncomfortable throw. Now, obviously, again, you could just throw straight. It's more uphill than the, the picture indicates. I'd say it's probably 15 to 20 feet uphill on a 230, 240 foot hole. But you kind of want to throw this like hyzer flip up here or just a straight shot. The problem is these trees over here on the right really gobble up shots. These little tiny trees here, if you touch any of them you're probably in the weeds here so missing off to the left is actually the safer play if you are going to miss and it's just more power than it looks and so it, I find it tends to be kind of an uncomfortable hole to throw which can be good on a course get, present something that looks uh, easy at first but as you think about it, it becomes more uncomfortable uh, so I think it's a decent hole then we get to hole number seven, which is a, you have a Mando up here, of course, uh, without the Mando, which was, the sign was added recently. I think it was kind of a local knowledge thing before where you, that was a Mando, but, but I used to throw a big old spike hyzer around that way. But you got to go over here and the basket's somewhere around there. Uh, and so it's a backhand uh, shot again around 220 to 250 perhaps, uh, or a flick um, kind of threading the needle here you want to go in front of this tree because there's not really any room behind there's a lot of these young stick trees that'll gobble up the disc so you want to hit that little gap here and if you do you got a punt if not it's a really uh simple par uh but it's it's a sh different shape than you've seen before on the course so a little bit of variety there then we get to hole number eight which is i think is easily the best hole in the course it is by far the longest hole in the course i believe it's 320 330 ish the basket's right tucked away here and you're presented with a really big conundrum up here across this wall and into the neighboring houses yards is out of bounds um and the problem is you got this big old tree right here in the middle this picture actually exaggerates how big this gap is when you're on the t getting through here is looks so tiny in fact i might be standing off a little bit to the right of the tee box to get this perspective i think i was trying to get the basket in view you're really pinched off to get on this kind of forehand flex route but of course the forehand flex is really the only way to get in the circle on this hole you want it coming in and then flexing back and taking the later turn to the right uh, than you would get on a turnover shot, a backhand turnover. Uh, but the backhand turnover is possible. The problem is that short and to the right of the basket around here is the thickest woods on the course. If you're in there, it can be hard just to get out. And I've, I've had to pitch out just 90 degrees to the left just to get out of there. Uh, which so if you overturn it, it goes there. If you underturn it, you're moving away from the basket. Uh, so the turnover demands a really precise turnover that kind of turns. Ideally, you'd want it to turn to get around this corner in front of this tree, uh, kind of straighten out for a bit and then turn over again, which isn't really a shot that exists. Uh, so that's what makes it uncomfortable and a really challenging hole, easily the most challenging hole at Peabody. And then finally, we get to hole nine, which 
I do not like very much. I think perhaps it's the weakest hole on the course, although, you know, maybe there's something interesting there. The basket on hole nine is tucked way back here. This right here is hole one. And when you first look at the hole, you think, oh, it's a hyzer. There's two little routes here. You can go this outside route. You can go this inside route. Uh, but that's a trick. This outside route is does not exist. Uh, it, there's just no throw that can go that way and end up near the hole because there's a cluster of young trees right there that will gobble up your disc. So you can't take that outside route. The play that I see most people do is... Sometimes I see a backhand hyzer along the inside. My play is actually to throw a, an Anheuser forehand along the inside with a very stable disc so it turns the corner and then flattens out and glides. The problem is there's trees all along there, so you're just kind of throwing and hoping. The other gap is you try to sneak a forehand around there, getting behind this tree, and in front of these trees here. And that's probably the cleanest, most predictable line. The problem is you're throwing directly then at the number one tee pad. And this is the worst place for overlap on this small property. And I wish they would just close this off and force the tight hyzer line. You know, maybe cut, uh, ideally cut down these trees so you have a more direct route and just make it a slightly easier hole. Because right now, the more you kind of push onto the hole number one, uh, that's the cleanest route to uh, number nine's basket. So overall, there's some interesting holes here. There's some problems. There's a lot of holes that I would define as just like a, a test hole, right? It presents you with a gap. You got to hit the gap or you got to not hit the gap. And I've complained before in previous reviews about too many of these holes. I think given the property at Peabody, uh, the small size of it and how it's squeezed in there, uh, that's kind of all you can do. It could certainly be better, uh, but I have some some fondness for this. This is really where I started playing disc golf. This is the course I first played. This is where I, I learned how to throw in the woods, especially hitting that gap on number two, which is so tight. I mean, it's maybe four or five feet wide at most, maybe less. And uh, I, I do have a fondness for it. I like that there's a couple birdie holes that helps the ego, although they're obviously not great holes. They're just straightforward, short little pitch-ups. Uh, but eight, uh, number six, number two, number four, I think are legitimately pretty good par threes. And so I'm not going to be too hard on the course. I'm going to give it a two out of five. I don't think it quite lives up to uh, the promise that it would have on a larger property, but this is what it's got. It's not a bad course to play. It's not going to test your game in all of its facets uh, as an everyday course, which is why it really can't get a higher score than two uh, but if you want a little putter mid-range course for most of the holes and hole number eight I can't reach a mid-range there uh, but for most of the holes uh, it's a very pleasant walk it's always well maintained it's clean it's uh, pretty conveniently located so that's my home course my closest course Peabody Country Club or excuse me <laughs> Peabody <laughs> Disc Golf Course uh, two out of five Decent course, little nine-holer. You're not going to regret going there, but don't go out of your way. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and comment and subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, and I'll be back with more re re course reviews and some more updates on my competitive play. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss those videos. Thanks for watching.